David Cavanaugh. I'm going to get a walk around view of my ANET A8 and talk about some of the things that I've done to upgrade it. Um, and I think I get pretty good results. And I'll first show you some of the interesting things I've printed. Um, there's a velocity printing um, Marsh vase with a pattern in it. Um, here's a interesting fractal that I did a previous video about and one of those classic geared hearts that people are making. Um, all the upgrades on here of course were printed with this printer and so let me first show you some of the things that I think really helped this be more functional. Um, you know first of all there's the um, z-axis um, home switch upgrade. Um, previously this was mounted inboard here and you had to adjust to the switch height with uh, two screws and now there's just a, uh, a hex head um, bolt here that um, I can turn and adjust that height pretty quickly. Um, actually I haven't adjusted that in a while now so <laughs> you know perhaps once you get it right you're, you're good. Um, Here's another thing that I liked a lot. Um, see, I, I, I first printed this um, this front frame brace, and I thought that would be really good to have, but then I, I saw this um, um, ZX, I'm sorry, uh, Y axis um, belt tensioner, um, and, and actually it's a whole structure that connects back um, and replaces the rear motor mount. And so you have two hex rods here. Um, that are maintaining the distance between the pulleys and take the full load of the tension belt. And the belt is tensioned by adjusting these two nuts on here and, and it it's, maintains a nice tension. This is a belt I ordered off of Amazon which is a slightly upgraded belt. Um, it has fibers within it so it should be very low stretch. The next thing that I really liked was this x-axis um, tensioner. Let me see if my camera adjusts here to the lighting. Um, so what's going on here is that the original tensioner has been replaced. The original, originally there was two screws that were um, in place and the belts wrapped around them with um, zip ties holding the belts. Um, now what we have um, is um, a plastic piece that is um, holding the belts in place um, and, and that works very well, it's very secure. And then this piece here is adjustable. Um, so you can adjust this. There's a, um, move this over a little bit. There is a screw right over here and that is, uh, there, there's a captive nut inside and then this whole piece slides back and forth. And um, again, nice tension on the belt. Not too tight, but quite snug. Um, it's not really going anywhere. So that is a beautiful piece right there. Um, I rec highly recommend that. I'll be linking everything in the descriptions for the video. Um, another thing I really liked, um, this is some of the $5 filament from Proto Paradigm. Um, there's a little su a suggestion for this sort of holder for that, which seems to work pretty well. But what I really liked were these... Um, these kind of stepped um, holders, or uh, I don't know what you call them, I guess, but uh, they, they hold the spools very nicely. It's a skate bearing that's pressed in there, which fits beautifully on this rod, um, and everything moves nicely. I, I, had, I printed those, and then I could finally start printing unattended, uh, because aside from like any filament struggle, I mean, uh, winding issues, um, essentially this thing moves very well, and it, never hangs up. Um, here is something I printed very early on as well, um, the electronics enclosure which has the standard controller board and uh, nice action on the reset switch. I also have two MOSFETs in there to control the heating elements on the printer, so one for the heated bed and one for the hot end. I did a previous video that indicate or showed some of those wiring upgrades as well. Um, Another simple thing I printed really early on was this sort of filament guide. I've zip tied it on there because it tends to come off. Um, I'm reasonably happy with that, so I see no reason to change that. And finally, this is something that I, I designed. Um, 
I wasn't happy with some of the other color covers I saw based on how they attached. And so what I have here is a cover that um, attaches with two screws down uh, down in there and and one of see, just that out of the way. And then one of them down on that side. And there's there's captive nuts within the walls of this. And so this thing is very secure on there. Um, and it gives you all the space down to the bottom of the, the printer. And at this point I just have the power input module on there with the switch. Um, I'm happy to add um, other holes for additional switches for lighting. My lighting is on all the time. And so I, it, I didn't really worry about that for mine. Um, this, is, this is sitting on a table that communicates all the sound very well. So once I start running this, you'll hear it. Um, I will be a little more loud than normal. Um, all right, so the next thing I'm going to do is set it up and, and uh, start printing. Uh, I, I did want to show these are the basic things I use when I'm operating the printer. I have a screwdriver for leveling um, the bed. I have glue that I put on the glass. And I have the paper that I use to measure the distance between the hot end and the glass. And I do that on four corners and I adjust the, the bed and uh, I have to rotate the glass slightly to do that. I may someday trim off the corners of the glass because that would probably be the, the nice way to improve the, the experience here. Um, anyway, I'm going to get a, a print started and then start this up again. Back to printing now. Um, this is a Raspberry Pi Zero case that I've been wanting to print. I just kept that uh, amethyst filament in there. So we have sort of a clear looking case, which is kind of cool. Um, this is not a bad first layer. Uh, honestly, I think maybe I need to get the, the hot end a little closer to the glass and get a little better squish on that first layer. Um, but I'll see how it goes. I may, I may reprint, but I'm just going to see how this print comes out. You can see there's like little gaps over there on, on that part of um, the print. But other than that, I mean, it, things look pretty consistent and decent. Um, and I think what else I wanted to point out here about the printer. Yeah, I guess uh, I will point out that um, I try not to do upgrades for the sake of upgrades because it, it sure is a lot of fun to print things that you can attach to the printer. Um, you notice I didn't print any um, big Z-axis um, braces. I didn't print any any uh, drag chains. Um, you know, I have my wiring kind of you know attached in in the original original way, but I just made it made sure that it was very free and, and can move very easily. Um, and I've really had no problems with that, and I kept it simple. Um, you know, nothing wrong with you know doing a lot more upgrades, um, but I'm, I'm trying to be fairly picky about the ones I do, so I don't, I guess, do too much, um, just because I, <laughs> I don't like to do things for the sake of doing them. I kind of like to make sure that they're going to help. Um, you know, for example, that that front brace is really not needed when you do this. Um, this Y-axis upgrade. Um, I made those fit together, and so that's the only reason I haven't taken that brace off the front. Uh, so, um, another thing I've noticed too, um, like when I first started printing, you know, sometimes you'd, you'd see like a little screw that was loose. That was mostly right after initial assembly. I retightened things, and I've really not found any loose screws after that. Uh, things seem to stay pretty snug. Um, but I will say you should watch out for that with this printer. Because um, once things loosen up, then things, you know, don't stay where they should. Um, I mean, notice the fan kicked on after that first layer was done. Um, and hopefully we'll, we'll start seeing some good quality here as it's laying down the second layer. Um, anyhow, I guess that's it. Um, again, I'm going to link to the upgrades that I have performed. Um, in the description of the video. Thanks for watching.